Welcome to TechNet Edge. My name is Ranjana Jain and today I'll be talking about the difference between a monolithic and a microkernel hypervisor. The actual hypervisor is a very thin layer of code on top of the hardware that presents a very small attack surface. The hypervisor was developed under the industry leading Microsoft security development life cycle which ensures a product team security education, threat modeling, code reviews, static analysis, uh, fuzz and penetration testing and a robust security response. There are two kinds of hypervisors, monolithic and microkernel. A monolithic hypervisor is a relatively thick layer between the guest operating systems and the hardware. Monolithic hypervisors carry their own hardware drivers which are different from the hardware drivers in the guest operating systems. The hypervisor controls guest access to processors, memory, I.O. devices and isolates guests from one another. Because a monolithic hypervisor is a relatively large and uh, carries multiple drivers, it presents a significant attack surface. If the hypervisor is compromised through either the hypervisor code or the third party drivers that it loads, the entire physical host and all guests can be compromised too. Rather than accepting this unnecessary risk, Microsoft developed the Hyper-V using microkernel architecture. In this model, the hypervisor is a thin layer between the guest and the hardware. The hypervisor provides simple partitioning functionality that leverages virtualization extensions to the processor. Guest operating systems use their own native drivers. This means that the hypervisor contains no third party code that could introduce vulnerabilities. The microkernel hypervisor also supports more hardware as OEMs already produce OS drivers and need not produce separate hypervisor drivers. With a guest using its own drivers, the size of the trusted computing base of the TCB is reduced as guests are not routed through the parent partition drivers. Microsoft believes microkernel is the best approach as it ensures that all hypervisor code is Microsoft code produced under the security development lifecycle, presenting the smallest attack surface possible. As OEMs are not required to produce the hypervisor drivers, more hardware is available and the possibility of systems performing differently when virtualized is diminished. Modern processors contain virtualization extensions which allows the hypervisor to be a much thinner software layer. That means that if you're using Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2, you can definitely make use of Hyper-V which is built into these Windows servers as a server role and can make use of this microkernel hypervisor.